Hello everyone, I'm Priyanka. I'm a radiologist at Melbourne. I work as a consultant with FMIG and Marina Radiology and I'm also the clinical director at HealthScreen. I will be speaking to you about MRI staging of uterine cancer today. It is very important because recently FIGO underwent revision in 2018 and it incorporates radiological findings now for staging of the tumor. So the purpose of this talk is to help us identify the tumor and assign a correct tumor stage to it. Now this is going to be the overview of the talk. We'll briefly touch on the epidemiology, then the role of MRI, talk about figure staging, individual stages and the recurrence of tumor. 95% of uterine cancers are endometrial cancers, whereas the other uh, Uterine tumors uh, are not so common and are about less than 5% of all uterine cancers. So for the purpose of this talk, we're going to be focused mainly on endometrial cancers. It is the sixth most common malignancy in women worldwide, but it, for some reason it's not so common in India. Its incidence is uh, increasing because of longevity and obesity. Most of the cases tend to happen in postmenopausal women and they present with uh, postmenopausal bleeding. Screening ultrasound is quite helpful. If you take a cutoff of endometrium as 4 or 5 millimeters, you, you will be able to detect more most of the cancers with a very high sensitivity and specificity. Endometrial cancers are classified into two different types, type 1 and type 2. Now, type 1 has endometrioid histology and that includes adenocarcinoma, whereas type 2 includes the papillary series and clear cell cancers. Type 2 tend to be more aggressive and are associated with the figure grade 3 tumors. They tend to happen in postmenopausal women and have slightly lower survival rate of about 40% compared to 80% in type 1 cancers. Uh, there's no association with pre-malignant diseases or with estrogen exposure in type 2 diseases, whereas there is a direct correlation in type 1 cancers. Staging is figo surgical staging, but as I mentioned, we now have MRI of the pelvis for local staging of the disease and a PET CD scan or just a CD scan for full staging. The standard surgical staging will include hysterectomy, bilateral salpingophorectomy, lymph node dissection, peritoneal washings, and mental biopsies. Now, MRI is the modality of choice for local staging. It accurately determines the depth of myometrial invasion, which correlates with the tumor grade, lymph node metastasis, and five-year survival. Small field of view sequences are very helpful, together with dynamic imaging. Now, I spoke about uh, patient preparation in my previous talk and therefore I'll not discuss all that again. But uh, this image is here to show you how to plan your sequences. So that's the uterus and the tumor in the endometrial cavity. Your axial sections are meant to be planned perpendicular to the long axis of the endometrium. And the coronal sequences, the small field of view, are meant to be perpendicular to these axial sequences. On MRI, the tumor is going to be iso intense to endometrium and myometrium, so you will not really be able to identify the tumor. Whereas on tiru weighted sequences, the tumor is going to be hypo intense or sometimes iso intense to the endometrium, and it's going to be hyper intense to the myometrium. On dynamic sequences, it is going to enhance earlier than the endometrium and slower than the myometrium. And it is therefore going to be that there's, there's going to be maximum contrast between the tumor and myometrium at about 50 to 120 seconds. On diffusion, the tumor is going to have low ADC values, but be mindful of presence of blood products within the endometrial cavity if patient did undergo a recent biopsy, as they can also have low ADC. Now, here is an example. We can see uh, this is a satellite T2 weighted sequence. The endometrium is clearly thickened. We cannot identify where is the normal endometrium and where is the abnormal because it is so thick. But there is some contrast we notice between the myometrium and this endometrial lesion. On T1, if you can see everything, or rather the endometrium, the tumor and the myometrium look pretty much similar. When we administer contrast, we can see we've got here the tumor is uh, enhancing earlier than the normal endometrium, which is here but it is uh, slower than the myometrium. So the first structure to enhance is myometrium, then the tumor, and then the endometrium. 
So at about 50 seconds, we have, we have maximum contrast between the normal myometrium, the tumor in endometrium, and the normal endometrium. This is just another image of another patient. If you see, there is a very poor visualization of tumor here in the endometrial cavity on the two-weighted image. But there is this tiny focus of restricted diffusion to the right side of endometrial cavity. And uh, that is the tumor. Now, this is an image of a patient who's got a really tiny lesion in the endometrial cavity. It was enhancing less than the myometrium and slightly more than the adjacent endometrium. And this is a zoomed up version of the same which shows you the tumor here. So if we put together all the sequences, there is a very high sensitivity and specificity for picking up even tiny lesions. For lesions like this, please bear in mind that sometimes there could be a small submucosal fibroid or just a polyp that can also look like this. And in those cases, there has to be histopathology to help you make the accurate diagnosis. This is just another example. The image on your left is a sagittal T2 weighted image, which shows the tumor very nicely. And the second one is a fused image of uh, diffusion and a T2 uh, weighted sequence, which is showing restricted diffusion in the tumor. So now we will move on to individual staging. Stage one is confined to uterus. 1A involves the endometrium and inner half of the myometrium, whereas stage 1B involves the outer half of the myometrium. So here we see a tumor. Uh, it's very easy to identify the tumor in the endometrium, but that's not the purpose. We have to stage it accurately. So we can see the tumor is uh, here to the right side of the uterine corner and the mid in the middle of the endometrial cavity. And then we have this junctional zone, which is low T to signal around the uh, tumor and the endometrial cavity which so we do see there's a restricted diffusion within the tumor and there's some nodular component here on uh, contrast enhanced scan so there's definitely a tumor now we need to decide whether it's stage 1a or stage 1b so if you can identify the junctional zone clearly on the small field of view sequences then it's likely going to be stage 1a which means it's not disrupted that junctional lining and is going to be a stage one tumor. This is just to show the presence of the endometrial junctional zone lining. So this is, as I said, a stage one A tumor. Now, the junctional lining that I just mentioned, it has a subendometrial enhancement on the contrast enhanced scans. This is going to be helpful again if you cannot see the junctional zone on T2 sequences but you see intact this rim of subendometrial enhancement that chances are that it's a stage 1A tumor. Moving on in this case again there's no difficulty in identifying the tumor within the endometrial cavity but we have uh, lost the junctional zone there is no subendometrial enhancement so this is going to be a stage 1B tumor. How do you define endometrial invasion? So you just draw a line parallel to the inner myometrium here and then measure the thickness of the myometrium and then the thickness of the tumor here. When you do that, you will be able to identify whether it's superficial or invasion or deep invasion. Ratio of... Uh, these two is going to give you the depth of my metal invasion. If it's more than 50%, it's deep invasion. So the image on left is superficial invasion and the image on right is deep invasion of the tumor. Now it's very important because the prevalence of lymph node metastasis with stage 1A is only about 3%, whereas with stage 1B is about 46%. So we should be able to identify this correctly. There are limitations in accurate assessment of myometrial invasion. That is because of a few factors. There's uh, myometri there can be myometrial thinning and loss of zonal anatomy in postmenopausal women. There can sometimes be peritumoral inflammation, which is going to lead to overestimation of uh, the depth of invasion. 
Sometimes the cavity or the myometrium is distorted due to uh, coexisting fibroids. Sometimes the tumor extends to cornu, in which in which area that is uh, normally very thin myometrium, so it's difficult to decide. Or sometimes the endometrial cavity is significantly distended by the tumor and the myometrium is compressed around the tumor, in which case it's going to be difficult to, uh, to accurately stage the disease. Moving on to stage two, stage two tumors extend to the cervix. So they're going to disrupt the low cervical stroma of the cervix or there's going to be direct extension into the endocervical canal. But if you see a polypoidal tumor in the endometrial cavity extending into the endocervix, that's not stage two, that's still stage one disease. It has to definitely involve the endocervical lining or the cervix for it to be labeled as stage two. Here we can see the tumor is extending into the cervix directly, this part and this part. So that is stage 2 disease. In stage 3, there's tumor extension into the uterine serosa and next say vagina and or pelvic or parioric lymph nodes. And there's going to be stage 3A, B, 3C1 and 3C2. So in terms of uh, ovarian metastasis, uh, you're going to have bilateral involvement. The tumor is going to look similar to the primary tumor in the endometrial cavity and the uterine mass is, ten is going to be larger than the ovarian masses. If it's primary synchronous tumors in the ovaries, it's going to be a large unilateral ovarian mass. There's going to be precursor lesions such as endometriosis or endometriotic cyst and the uterine mass is going to be low grade tumor. What I mean is it's going to be, let's say, a stage 1 tumor. Then it's unlikely to be ovarian metastasis. Whereas if you see a stage 1B or a stage 2 tumor, definitely on imaging, then it could be uh, ovarian metastasis. Here we've got a tumor in the endometrial cavity appearing very heterogeneous with presence of cystic uh, necrosis areas and some hemorrhage. Here, if you pay attention to the uterine fundal area, there's loss of low signal of the uterine serosa. And this is going to be a stage 3A disease. See, when it's a very big tumor, uh, clearly growing out of the serosa, it's very easy to identify, but we need to be uh, paying attention to such tiny uh, extensions. Another example, we see tumor into the cervix that is thickening the cervical stroma which is expanded because of the tumor. And then there are regional lymph nodes that we see. This is an axial uh, image. And this is a parioric lymph node that we're seeing. So this is going to be a stage 3B for the tumor stage. But then because of lymph node involvement, it becomes stage 3C2 because we also have parioric lymph nodes. Now there's a stricter diffusion that we see in this lymph node in the pelvis. And that means nothing. Even benign lymph nodes have been shown to demonstrate restricted diffusion, so that doesn't help. For lymph node evaluation, uh, if you go with a measurement of one centimeter, you could have a very high specificity but low sensitivity. Whereas if you start taking 0.8 centimeters at, as cutoff, there will be increased sensitivity. So <clears throat> at our place, we take 0.8 centimeters of uh, pelvic lymph nodes and more than one centimeters of parioric lymph nodes as abnormal. A lymph node having irregular contour, internal necrosis, or presence of cluster lymph nodes favor it to be metastatic in movement. PET CT or additional CT scan is going to help your uh, NNM staging of the disease, but it's not part of standard of care for initial staging. Stage 4 tumors directly extend to the pelvic side walls, lower third of vagina, mucosa of the bladder or rectum and result in hydronephrosis or non-functioning kidney. Stage 4a is bladder or rectal mucosal involvement. Stage 4b is distant metastasis. Invasion of pelvic side wall is suggested when distance between tumor and the pelvic wall is less than 3 millimeters. Mucosal edema that you see on T2 weighted sequences or just enhancement is not sufficient to call it tumor. The rectal and bladder wall invasion is best assessed on sagittal sequences 
And if you have a clear flat fat plane between the tumor and these organs, then you can confidently say that there's no rectal or bladder invasion. So this is going to be your reporting checklist. You talk of T-stage, you talk of deep myometal invasion, any cervical stromal invasion, uterine cirrhosal and adnexal extension, vaginal invasion, urinary bladder or rectal invasion, and then do your end staging with pelvic or parioric lymphadenopathy. When there's a doubt, please tend to assign a lower tumor stage so that patient can get uh, appropriate treatment and not have to go for radical treatment. This is how the patients are managed. So this is the risk stratification based on histology and MRI findings. So if you've got a low risk tumor, which is grade one or grade two, I'm talking of grades and not stages, which is grade one or two. Remember the endometrioid grade, uh, grade tumors that we talked about earlier. So in low risk, there's going to be very low risk of lymph node disease. So these patients do not need to undergo lymphadenectomy. Grade 1 or 2 with a higher tumor, with a larger tumor, which is stage 1b, or grade 3 with a smaller tumor, which is stage 1a, they have slightly increased risk of lymph node invasion, and then you have to consider individually for these patients. Whereas someone who has a grade 3 disease or a stage 1b uh, low grade tumor, these patients are recommended to undergo lymphadenectomy. Recurrence, now that's defined as tumor regrowth and or presence of distant metastatic disease after treatment. It's going to have very similar appearance as primary tumor. Uh, patients who have advanced age at presentation, have high-grade disease or were found to have lymphomascular inv invasion on the original staging scan are at higher risk of recurrence. The overall recurrence rate is still about 15%. And 80% of these are going to present in the first three years with lymph node involvement or vaginal vault involvement. MRI is performed for local staging and PET CD scan for distant metastasis.